Hello fellow Scratchers! Today we are going to unravel the mysteries of word wrapping, specifically how to extend our text engine to wrap any length of text neatly within a specified rectangular boundary. But how are we going to get Scratch to break up our text at the right points? Or to handle extra long text that overflows an entire line? Well stay tuned to find out, as we continue this awesome series coding a text engine in Scratch. So as we begin, load up your episode 2 projects, and let's save them as a new copy. But this is episode… Uh, um, oh, ok you got me. This is episode 3, I promise. Anyhow guys, let's get scratching! So word wrapping. This will look cool if we have some kind of page or dialogue to write upon. To create a new sprite named page. For the costume I'm going to draw a simple rectangle in pastel yellow, like a post-it, and making sure it's nice and central. Now we can spend lots of time later making this look awesome, but for now this will do. When you run the project you may find that the text has moved behind the new page sprite. No problem, click into the font sprite, and for the time being, under the when I receive test script, just drop in a go to front. Right away the text springs to the front. Great! So we have a nice page, but we don't want our text flowing right up to the costume's edges, no indeed. So we'll try to define our actual text bounds as a rectangle within this page, giving us a simple margin. A rectangle can be defined by its top left and bottom right points. We'll call these x1, y1, and x2, y2. Let's make a new custom block to make this easy to define. Set page left. With an input of x1, the label top, with an input of y1, and then the label right, with an input of x2, and the bottom label, with an input of y2. Click to run without screen refresh, and we are ready. Now, these values we will store in four new variables. First one, page L for page left setting it to x1, and page t for page top, setting it to y1, page r for page right, setting it to, you guessed it, x2, and lastly page b for page bottom, setting it to y2. So let's set up the page dimensions now. Under our when I receive test script, drop in the new set page block. So how can we tell what screen location the top left corner should be set to? Hmm, tricky in Scratch 3. Well, if you have Scratch add-ons then actually it's not. I just hover my mouse at the location I want, and the mouse location add-on shows me where I am. It's like uh, negative 150 by 90. No need to be super accurate, and type the value in. But if you have not got Scratch add-ons, then how can we find out our location? Well, how about this? When space key pressed, ask mouse x, and we can ask mouse y too. Then hover over the position we want to know and press the space. So that's an x of 159. But of course we want the margins to be symmetrical, so I'm actually going to put in an x of 150. And then I'll reposition again and it's a y of negative 31. I just pressed enter to find out. Ok, brilliant. So we have our page bounds defined. Next up we need to make sure when we write to the screen the text will appear at the top of the page rather than at our mouse cursor. That was so episode 2. So we make our way over to the define right block. When our text is left aligned, the position of the text is set here. Set xx to the input x. Well no longer, these inputs are going to go in favour of using the page bounds. And for the left aligned text that will be page L, the left edge of the page. Now before I forget, we also want to remove the set y block here. We will assume the y position is already set before we begin to write to the screen. That's a bit of a change, but don't worry about that right yet. Now what about the other alignments? Let's look at the right aligned text. 
that will want to be offset relative now to the right hand edge of the page. So we enter page R, page right, and subtract the width of the text, and that's it. Centering takes a little more thought, we need to find the centre of the page bounds. To calculate this, we need to take the average of the left and right edges of the page. That is, the sum of page L and page R. And then we'll need to divide by 2. But hold on, because then we subtract width divided by 2. Well, if these are all being divided by 2, we can simplify this by subtracting the width from page R plus page L, and then divide the whole thing by 2 afterwards. Got that? Excellent. But now, the X and Y inputs are completely unused within this custom block. But also, the sprite's Y position is never set. What we'll do is come back over to the When I Receive test script and drop in a set Y position right before setting the page's dimensions. Setting Y2, of course, page top. Now our text will begin at the top of the page. Let's slap that green flag and see what we've got. Well, yes, the good news is that our text has appeared somewhere near where we wanted it to begin. The downside is that both lines of text are located one on top of the other. Now it's not surprising, considering the Y position of our right block is no longer used. Easy to fix, scroll back to the defined right block and down to the bottom. And once we've written out a line of text, we want to advance to the next line. So change Y by, and we are moving downwards. So use a zero, subtract, and drop in the line height variable. There we go. Looking much better. I'm glad we set up that variable. So every use of the right will advance the text to the next line. So what is the point of keeping this Y position input now? Well, absolutely no point at all. Let them be gone. Edit the right block and delete the X and Y labels and inputs. Wow, I hope you did make a copy of your project because it's a hard journey back from these changes. I'll just tidy up these orphaned variables. And as you can see, running the project shows no ill effects from the changes since those inputs really weren't used any longer. And if I duplicate the last right block, you can see that the auto advancement of the Y position works a treat without any further work required. Really like how that is working. Let's also check out the center alignment. So that now is centered on the page rather than our mouse cursor. And the right align is likewise now aligned to the right hand edge of the page bounds. Very cool. So then, this is where it gets exciting. We've mastered positioning and aligning to the page bounds, but if we enter a longer line of text in here, the text is still allowed to overflow the page bounds. And this looks as ugly as an ugly thing. And that's very ugly indeed. It's obvious what our next job must be. The most obvious fix might be to place a limit on the X position. In the right script, check if xx is greater than page r, the right hand edge of the page, and then set it back to the left edge, page l. Then, of course, make sure to change y by the negative line height to move the cursor down to the next line. So if we were to drop this in after changing XX, then… Aha! Not bad, right? Looks to me like we have some rudimentary wrapping going on, and yes we do, but this is not word wrapping. No, this is word break wrapping. See how the word mostly has been split in two, mid-word. This is not how we want our wrapping to work. No word should be split unless it's absolutely necessary. So what do we do now? Well, we really want to treat an entire word as a single unit, and therefore move any word that does not fit on the page onto the next line, as a whole. To detect a word, all we need to do is look back for the last space before we overflowed the page. But hang on! If we've already been cloning or stamping letters to the screen, 
then it's already too late. The deed has been done. So we must detect spaces before we hit the page bounds and before we draw anything to the screen. The process should look something like this. Work out the page width. The text length must not exceed this. We already have a variable i that, as before, represents the index of the letter to be written to the screen. 1 is the first letter, 2 the next, etc. But this stays right where it is while we look ahead to find out what text will fit on the line. So we have a new variable, wrap i, used to trace forward looking for spaces. But as we go, we will also sum up the letter widths in the variable width as before. Now this is new. If we find a space character, then we make a note of where it is, storing the last found index in safe i and the width in safe width. This keeps a record of the last safe wrappable position. If at any point the width becomes too wide to fit on the page, we have the safe variables to go back to for drawing our text. But otherwise, if all the text does fit, then we just use the wrap i and width as they are. Does that make sense? I think so. Cool then, delete the little experimental if. And before we add any more code, I note this write block is getting really rather long, so it's a good time to try to split it up with some custom blocks. A prime candidate being this align scripts here. From the if align equals c to the set i to zero. Yeah, make a new custom block, naming it calculate alignment. And it'll need an input named align. Just tick run without screen refresh and OK. We'll attach this define to the alignment scripts and make use of the new align block here, where we took the scripts from. We just need to make sure to pass through the align variable so it knows what alignment we are using. Brilliant. Join that all back up. And I'll move my scripts into some free space, <laughs> if I can find some, and a quick tap on the green flag to ensure things are still working tickety boo. And yes, no change is good change. Um, good news? Uh, yeah. So moving quickly on, let's get those new variables made so that we can start processing our first line of text. So we need a wrap i, and for this sprite only. Safe i, for this sprite only. Safe width, again for this sprite only. And one more, I'll name C. This one is for storing a single character, that is a letter, of the text we are processing. Again, make it for this sprite only. I'm going to hide them for now. OK, so because the text will be processed a line at a time, we can no longer use a repeat length text here. For this reason, I'm going to start i at 1 instead of 0. And then we can use a repeat until i is greater than the length of text instead. Move all the contained scripts over into the new loop, not forgetting the change y from the end, and we can replace that old repeat with this new one. Great! Of course, since we start i at 1 instead of 0, the change i by 1 needs to move down to be the last block in the repeat. Do you see how this works? We start at letter 1 and check each time that the letter index has not gone past the end of the text string. Again, we can give it a test and it still is working, but no magic wrapping yet. Oh no, this is what we'll start work on now. You know what? Make one more variable that I forgot. Name it page width for this sprite only. We want to know the maximum width of text that can fit on the page. We get that by setting page width to a subtract operator and subtract page left, page L, from page R, page right. Stick that at the top of the write script. Now let's set up the wrap i variable, ready to start scanning across the text. Set wrap i to, and this time, yes, we do set it to zero. This will make comparing the i variable to the wrap i variable that little bit easier, you'll see. And here we go, make a custom block, naming it find text wrap index. And definitely tick that run without screen refresh. We'll make use of it right away, sticking it in after we've set wrap i to zero, but before we calculate the alignment. 
That makes sense, as we will need to align whatever length of text comes back from using this new block. OK, so this new defined block, it's going to initially have a very similar function than our old get width of text block. In fact, it is destined to replace it altogether. However, we don't need to set txt, as this has already been done in the right script before we get here. What we do need is to set width to zero. The loop, again, can't use a repeat length, as we can't say how many letters we will need to repeat for. So let's instead use a forever loop. We'll find other ways to break out of it, so don't worry, it won't be forever, really. Now duplicate the scripts from the previous get width of text loop into our forever loop. This too wants to check along the text calculating the combined width. However, it's using the wrong variables. Switch the i variables for wrap i variables, including the one in the switch costume here. Great, that's right. But we will need to check the value of this letter to look out for spaces. So rather than use the letter of block more than once to get the same letter again, we'll set the variable c, before we switch costumes, to the letter wrap i of text and then pop that C variable in the second switch costume. So now we are free to check if C is equal to, but for starters, don't put a space on the right hand side. No, instead have the empty value. We get this result when we've reached the end of the string, the text, and there's no more letters. So we should stop this script. Drop that in right after setting C to stop this forever loop, and drop back to the main write script. Nice! We can test this now by coming back to the write script and switching out the length of text for a wrap i. This will stop the text from writing any more than the find text wrap block asked us to write out. How much is that though? Run the project, and of course, it's still everything. So don't panic, we've not done anything wrong. This is all good news. Now I don't know if you had your alignment set to left like me, or were using centre or right aligned at this point, but we have a little change to make in there before I forget. Find that define calculate align script. Now see how it's getting the width of text? Well, we can scrap that now. The width will already have been found by our new find text wrap script. Remove those blocks, they're no longer needed. So looking at our running project. What we should do next is start looking for the gaps between words, the space letters. Find the define find text to index script. To begin with, just duplicate the if c equals check, and this time we will enter a space in the right hand side, comparing c to space. Stuff that under the other if. And why are we stopping the script when we hit a space? Simple, it's a great way to check that the script is working. Run the project. The how! Oh yeah, I love it! Both lines of text have been cut off just after one word. Exactly what we would have expected. So we can move on. If you can remember the plan of action, when we find a space, we don't want to stop. No. We want to record where the space was by setting safe i to the current index, that's wrap i. And also, we want to record in safe width the current width. That's better. But this is only useful once we also detect that our text has become too long to fit on the page. So at the bottom of our forever loop, after changing x by the width of the last letter, check if greater than width is greater than our page width. And if it is, then we will stop here. But before we do, we reset the wrap i back to the last recorded safe i. And likewise, resetting the width back to the last recorded safe width. Before finally stopping this script. Oh yeah, that sounds perfect. We gotta give this a test. Smash the green flag. OK, now what have we got here? The rain in Spain certainly does fall, but no longer mainly in the plane. Mainly didn't fit on the line and has been cut off. 
and we would expect it now to wrap onto the next line instead. But we haven't coded that bit yet. Now I'm really excited to get this fully working, and we're so close now, so find with me the define write script once more. Once we've written out all the text that fits on a single line, we need to be able to continue processing the same text string, looping back up to the top of this script again to find the next text wrap index. OK, so in that case, let's wrap this repeat loop up in a custom block. Create a new block, naming it write letter feed. Run without screen refresh. We'll put the whole of that repeat script into there. So the find index and calculate size blocks will need to be repeated, but the set i definitely needs to go above these then outside any loop. We'll use another repeat until block. After setting i, repeating until, yes, bring back the i is greater than length of text check once more. We can pop in the two custom blocks to get them to run until all the text has been processed. Split, and then, written to the screen by dropping in the new right letter feed block. There. Now it doesn't make a difference, but I'll move the final change y block up into this repeat loop, just so we can see it. Oh my goodness, guys, if everything has gone right, then we are ready to run this baby. Smashing the green flag, and oh yes, look at that perfect wrapping text. At least it looks like it, we'd better do some more tests. Try changing the alignment. Right aligned? Check. Centered? Yes, check. So cool how it aligns to this box now. Of course, to really see this wrapping in action, how about we cheekily pop a mouse X into the set page left input? Now the left margin is controlled by our mouse, and we get this so cool dynamic wrapping. Isn't that crazy? It's so buttery smooth. And it works just as well with other alignments. Man, it's cool seeing this wrapping working like this. I've just got one more test case to try, and that's to see what happens when we try to write a single word longer than the width of our page. Oh no, that didn't work out well at all, did it? So why didn't this break onto a new line, do you think? The answer is obvious. It doesn't have any spaces in it to split at. This unfortunate fact means we'll need a special case to handle it. Scroll over to the define find text wrap index script and go down to the bottom. We know that for long words, this width will indeed be longer than the page. We just need to handle the special case of no spaces with an if else check. And we check if safe i is greater than the empty value. Safe i is only set when we found a space. We should ensure it does start blank though by setting safe i to the empty value before we begin our forever loop. So now, if safe i is set, then we did find a space and we can revert back to using the safe i and the safe width values as planned. Hey, uh, move this stop this script under the if else because both branches are still going to break out of the loop. So then, if no space was found in this else block, then this must have been a long line of unbroken text like those w's just now. Well then, we need to just break right here. Only because we did overflow, we should backtrack by only one letter to the left. Change wrap i by negative one. The width is a little tricky to fix. We need to subtract the width of the last letter added. We can duplicate the change width line and use a subtract block to change the width by zero subtract the letter width. Cool, run the project. Oh yes, I am really, really pleased with this. The wrapping is working exactly as it should to a very professional level indeed. We are right on track to getting this to function as a scratch dialog system. Or gosh, why not even try creating a functioning word processor? <laughs> what do you think? Could you do it? Well, we still have a good number of features to cover, 
But if you're enjoying these episodes, please, please smash that like button. I spend a lot of time making these videos for you, and to keep them free, I need as many people to love the project and subscribe to my channel as possible. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. Now, the final stage of this tutorial will be to bring back the option to slowly display text, but perhaps with a cool animation if you like that. The real trick though is how to also allow for fast skipping through without accidentally skipping too much text. We also want to allow paging of the text for when it overflows the bottom of a page. Love that little animating continue option. Then we can consider the entrance and exit animations for our dialogue page, and whether to add a cool hero icon to highlight who's talking. And all this operated through a simple yet powerful list language. Really? Oh gosh wow, I'm dead excited to wrap this all up and share it with you. But I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. That just leaves me to say thank you for watching, have a great week ahead, and scratch on guys.